So today we're going to do lower. Um, it is technically a posterior chain focus lower. Even if you're still going to eat everything. Um, today is a day where I normally do a lot of block pool, RDL and stuff, but since the gym is a bit packed uh, regarding the racks and stuff, uh, and that I need some variation for my deadlift, I figured, you know what, let's just try some pull on the floor. That's a stiff legged deadlift side. And uh, we'll see how it goes or if I change my uh, in between sets and I just do RDL. But uh, yeah, we're going to start with deadlift basically. It's turning. <laughs> it's <wrecking. laughs> Okay, so I just did two, two sets of stiff legged deadlift with uh, three plate, uh, three plate and a half in a biscuit. And you know, I uh, actually just uh, was um, going on with the same barbell than a power lifter friend. So I, I'm just going to do like two supplement tests of the RDL and my, my posterior chain is already basically fried. So. Yeah, I'm going to keep it safe because I do not want to have any kind of low back problem as I've already had in the past, so yeah. Just a light RDL from the motion. Um, let's focus on to the hamstring and glutes and uh, yeah. talked about it yet but you saw me doing neck work with bend between sets so if you have looked at my lower body one you saw that uh, on that day I was doing neck with uh, splits split loaded um, and on that day currently I'm doing it with the neck the neck leg harness and with a bend and the goal is simple I want to drive more volume and frequency because neck is something very fragile and you can't really train it to failure except maybe with manual resistance so you will need a partner for that and I can't have him film me and at the same time do this kind of work um, so 
you need to actually do some kind of higher frequency, higher volume. And to avoid any kind of injury or overuse or discomfort or anything, actually cycling the variation, just like you would for any kind of muscle, one day you do dumbbell or bar, and the other day you do machine or cable, I do exactly the same thing here, just with them. So I can train my neck more often with more volume to make it grow bigger, but with much less problems that could arise. So that's basically it. So now we're going to go on shrugs. Uh, it's an exercise that I like to go very heavy because what you need to achieve for traps is actually the stretch. You don't need that much of flex. Uh, it is a very resilient muscle group. So actually just going very, very heavy and just stretching the shit out of it is more than enough to stimulate any kind of muscle growth. And if you look at all the guys that have uh, humongous straps, uh, be it for the wrestler, the strongman, the power lifter, all they do is basically very heavy. So you do not need this kind of very slow and controlled tempo rep with slow weight and, and very light weight. You just need actually to go heavy. This is kind of the kind of muscle you can't fake. Um, you, like if you see someone with huge straps, that person is definitely strong. You can't see that of It might have looked ugly, but it works. <laughs> How do I know it works? <laughs> you, you got this. No? You don't got this? So shrug is heavier. surgery on this one, I'm not taking any chance. So, it boosts a bit the performance, maybe you gain one rep, or maybe one set feels a bit easier, so like it decreases the RPE, but that's that. It's not like a triple plio thing where you just get one plate uh, strength boost. So, if you have any kind of joint pain or joint discomfort, and you're going to push heavy, at some point, it should be something that you need to consider to actually go very long into the longevity aspect. Then the choice is yours.
everything is done, I'm going to do isolation work and I'm going to do prehab for the knee at the same time. So, by stucking my feet under the bench squat um, plate here, uh, I'm going to do some Nordic hamstring curl, or a mix of Nordic hamstring curl and riddle curl, and I'm going to do some reverse Nordic. So basically leg curling and leg extension with body weight. The goal is very simple, isolating the knee flexor and the knee extensor, and at the same time, we having the knee tendon ligament and joint capsule. Uh, as I have had many problems with my knees before, this exercise has helped me keep them healthy and get them healthier each time I have a problem. So it's not exactly the same as a leg curl or leg extension, um, so hence why I'm doing them and not just doing again some leg extension and leg curl like the previous lower. Um, and it also offers something very different and more onto the prehab heel side of weight training. So you need a lot of strength to, to um, get the skill right. It also needs a lot of conditioning for the joint because it is very stressful for the tendons, but when you get it right, it's perfect. I'm back into the machine, um, machine area and I'm just going to do one top set of 20 reps on the axe squat. The reason is simple, I just want to finish off my quad for good and I'd like to train with higher reps just to build more, a bit more of the cardio and the mental fortitude to go through pain. Uh, I already do that on the upper lower but I still want to do this with this one because two sets of squats, bell squats and just two sets of reverse Nordic for quads is a bit on the light side. So. I just want to keep uh, things interesting and just have this, uh, this other set and uh, yeah, that's about it. A few moments later. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> huh? Hello, motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> Welcome in the upside down. Do -do 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 I'm en train de faire la pendule avec la caméra. Have you ever heard about the Muffin Man? The Muffin 
Baik Mek Kakak-kakak Hehehe Super set with the boss. I go, let's go. Le clip il va durer un siècle. Again, one inches. We do it. There is more. 